things very quickly in uh, five, six days, basically. Well, uh, let's uh, welcome in Manishi Ray Chaudhary. Uh, he's Chief Executive Officer, uh, Emma Capital Partners. Uh, Manishi, good to see you in your, in the, in, in your new avatar. Uh, thank you for joining thank us. You. It's been a while. So actually, let me just pick up from what Nigel was talking about in terms of stocks, but not stocks so much as uh, policies. Uh, you know, uh, solar and renewables and, I mean, that's, of course, an emerging area here in India. It's got a long runway. Uh, who the winners will be is not so clear, uh, but at least now you've got listed clear pure play options out there. Uh, Makes sense at reasonable valuations to buy these companies because the worry which, you know, the, not naysayers, but skeptics say is that a lot of this sort of moat is driven by government regulation, government protection more than anything else because China is such a large producer of everything. I uh, just wanted your thoughts. Right. You know, in fact, what you asked me just now, first of all, it's 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 a pleasure to appear again, to meet you guys, to meet your viewers on this, on this channel. It's been a while, as you rightly pointed out. Um, you know, this sector, the renewable energy and energy transition in general, it is obviously a growing sector, and there's a characteristic difference between China and India. India, in a sense, is a is kind of an input taker. Much of these solar panels and you know the cells, these are manufactured in China, import exported to India, and um, you know the the kind of companies that we do have, they're essentially importing these and putting them together into into energy producing utilities. Now, here one big advantage that the Indian energy producers or even the solar panel manufacturers have is that the input costs are coming down and that's a direct function of the massive overcapacity that china has created um so yes i think in the in the initial part of the runway the company or the sector in general would have to depend on the government subsidies um also would have to depend on the on the policies, the various policies which incentivize investment in this sector. But, um, you know, I think that is likely to be a significantly long runway for India. We must remember that India's net zero ambition goes down to about 2070, which is 20 years after China's. So, you know, I would, I would definitely be, uh, you know, be quite positive on this sector, uh, the stocks at the right valuations as you rightly pointed out. Okay. All right. Uh, got that. Manishi, hi. Uh, great to be speaking with you. Um, so thank you for joining in. I just want thank to get you. your thoughts on uh, how to play the consumer side of the market because there are too many moving parts, right? Uh, FMCG companies have been struggling, but look at uh, what's happening to some of the quick commerce or the food delivery plays. Those stocks have been doing well. Those numbers have been imp improving. And then there is the high-end uh, discretionary consumption uh, whether it's jewelry stocks or uh, you know any, any other format, luxury hotels, and they've been doing really right. well. Do you expect more of the same in 2025? And what would your approach be to playing the consumer part of the market? I would expect more of the same, not just in 2025, but possibly for the next decade or two. You know, what you just pointed out is a usual phenomenon when the general population gets more affluent. Not only, uh, you know, I mean, things change. I mean, not only do they buy different things, they also buy things differently. You know, so, um, I mean, it's no surprise that people are buying things more on the online platforms. It is no surprise that they're using more of the, you know, the online and other, uh, you know, UPI-based payment systems. So... You know, the fact that these e-commerce platforms are doing well, the fact that the consumer discretionaries are doing better than the consumer staples, this does not come as a surprise to me. What one has to be very, um, you know, conservative and has to be careful about are, of course, the valuations. And we keep coming back to this point because in India, um, possibly more so in India than in any other market, high quality tends to trade at a high premium, in some cases, even egregiously high premium. So that is something we have to be careful about. Um, so I would definitely, over the next uh, you know, foreseeable time horizon, be more positive on the consumer discretionary than on the consumer tables. The consumer tables, if you look at the, uh, the frontline companies, 
Um, many of them are trading between, say, 40 to 50, in some cases even more, even higher price earnings multiples, with relatively pedestrian earnings growth expectations, about maybe um, low teens to about 15 to 16 percent. That doesn't really excite me. Um, and we have seen in the most recent earnings um, result announcement cycle, um, most of these companies have actually come up with warnings about both urban and rural consumption moderating. So, you know, even investors who are relatively positive on, on that sector will possibly have to stay out and wait and watch for a while. Okay, all right. Hi, Manishi. Uh, good morning and good to see you in your new role. Uh, Manishi, tell us about these uh, delivery-based companies, the food delivery companies, the quick commerce companies as well. Uh, Zomato, you have Swiggy, both of them are listed. And there is some interest in Zepto as well. I spoke to a large investor yesterday, and he was sounding extremely bullish on the prospects of Zepto. Your view on the space, it's clearly got a lot of traction. They're making the right sounds as well now with their talk towards profitability. Your view? When I look at these companies, I'm reminded of China about 12 to 15 years ago. You know, many of the, you know, the present Chinese giants, you know, like Alibaba got listed, uh, I think around 2011 or so. Um, many of the other companies like Meituan, food delivery, um, they got listed slightly later, but really started becoming big about a decade ago. So in a sense, what's playing out in India is very similar to what the way it had played out in China, maybe a decade or decade and a half ago. The market is still very un very much underpenetrated. You know, I think e-commerce um, would be accounting for single-digit proportion of the total retail sector, possibly in low single digits. Um, in case of China, that has gone to somewhere around, I think, close to 50%, if not more. You know, so what these companies would achieve in terms of sector growth and individual top line and earnings growth over the next decade or two is humongous. Now, of course, this is going to be a crowded space. You know, you will have, just like we have seen in China, there will be many companies trying to take advantage of this growth phase. Um, there will be competition which would drive down their margins. So it is something, it, you know, those factors will have to be watched out for carefully. You know, but as far as the sector growth and, um, you know, the fate of the leaders are concerned, I would definitely be uh, bullish over the long term. No, that's a well point well uh, taken, Manishi. By the way, since you uh, have tracked Asia Pack and companies around in the region quite closely, some, uh, some of these companies that you mentioned, right, how do they stack up against uh, what what one has to pay to buy to be able to buy the companies here? Uh, mm. You know, say size of revenue and uh, valuations, a fraction, right? right well, of what you pay here? You know, it is it, it's a it, it's a sad story in that sense. You know, I think most of the Indian companies are some of them are trading in triple digit multiples, right? I mean, they're possibly more than hundred p. You know, many others are in the range of sixty, seventy, or so. In contrast, I mean, if you look at the Chinese leaders, Tencent or Alibaba, they're trading in their mid-teens. Tencent, possibly about 16 times one year forward. Alibaba, somewhat similar. And their sizes are, uh, you know, I mean, you can't even think about, you know, I mean, comparing them to the Indian companies at the present stage. Um, now, of course, one would argue that those companies have gone ex growth. I mean, their growth phase of exponential growth is is behind them. They're now, uh, uh, you know, kind of more pedestrian growth in the range of maybe 15, 16, 17 percent. So they deserve to trade at those multiples. They're more mature companies than the Indian ones. So, um, you know, but that, uh, you know, valuation difference, the valuation gap is it is a bit alarming. I mean, and we talk about that every day. Manishi, as uh, I said, it's a pleasure to see you back uh, in your new role. Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, it's always a good chat. So a perspective, but in the context of what's happening around in the region as well. So that's Manishi Re Chaudhary uh, with that. I mean, the market's up, uh, so it'll be about 10 points or so. That's quiet, uh, I think, yeah. second quiet day. Let's see if it changes uh, as the day progresses. But for the time